my first year of university, I started volunteering for an organisation in Leeds called Meeting Point. So at Meeting Point, they basically did um, two-hour-long drop-in sessions with lots of different people, mainly asylum seekers and refugees, living in quite a deprived area of Leeds. So there we did things like food bank, we cooked together as a team, um, we gave out clothes, donations and things. Um, and I was so inspired by this set of people who had, who had me on a weekly basis learning about their different cultures and their language and experiencing their food was lovely. I really enjoyed like going to the meetings every week. Um, I also found out as part of that that they did a particular women's group on the Wednesday. So I decided to get involved with that because it linked really well to the midwifery that I was, that I was studying at the time. So as part of that, I ran like craft sessions. And again, it was just an opportunity to get to know different women um, and really hear about their experiences. And it's that sort of um, learning from their stories and them sharing their experiences that really inspired me. And it was something that I just wanted to continue. So the next stage was when uh, the maternity stream, Rose McCarthy, came and spoke to to us as a as a university group in second year at Bradford. Um, and she brought along some volunteers to speak and to share their birth experiences. The whole group were in tears at what they heard because there was one woman who spoke about um, her FGM and her her journey as an asylum seeker and how um, the Home Office were trying to deport her back to Nigeria. It was so emotive, it was, yeah, it was ridiculous really and we all sort of left the session thinking we really need to help these vulnerable women and if, if we can't make a change then who can? Because we're the, we're the maternity providers, we should be picking up on FGM and we should be standing up for women's rights. Um, so, so yeah, so I left that session feeling really inspired but also really hopeless because I thought, oh, I'm such a small fish in this massive pond, what can be done? So I arranged to meet Rose um, and speak about possible volunteering opportunities. So the meeting went really well and then I started um, volunteering for the maternity stream. So what I did there was I interviewed some of the women about their stories, so their experiences of living in the UK, their experiences of accessing maternity care um, and hearing about their birth stories. So once I'd heard all of these stories, I typed them up and now they're on the City of Sanctuary website for all to see. So whilst I was actually doing these interviews, I felt very emotional, as usual, because <laughs> I'm always crying. Um, so I felt really emotional because these women had come to this country with absolutely nothing. Some of them not knowing where England is, how to speak the language, not knowing how to access health services or even where a supermarket is. So they were completely vulnerable and alone. Um, and it just First of all, it made me realise how privileged I am personally to, to know all of those things and to have open access to everything in the UK. But it also inspired me to really um, help and support these women, especially in the midwifery world. So I couldn't wait to be qualified so I could start making different changes, um, which, which I have been doing since then. So following on from the interviews, um, I wanted to go abroad as part of my elective placement, so I applied for some funding, told them about my volunteer experience and, um, and won an award. So the Cavell Nurses, Trust, the Cavell Nurses Trust sponsored me to go abroad to Ghana for five weeks and to practice midwifery out there. So I did three weeks working in a really, really busy maternity unit. I got the opportunity to deliver loads of babies, but also meet some really inspiring women, just as I was meeting here in the UK. And I think that was really beneficial um, because I've seen like the different African cultures firsthand um, and got and learned how to deal with things such as communication barriers, especially when looking after uh, women in labour. So I learned the basic words for 
push my name is your baby is beautiful and I realized that even just learning small words like that it really just breaks the ice and I made some really lovely relationships with the women even though of course their practice is perhaps not as good as ours in many ways because their mortality rate is really high it was still an amazing learning experience that's contributed to my practice as well so since going to Ghana I still try and spend some time with the maternity stream coming to the mater uh, coming to the peer support meetings and still meeting the women and things um, so I do that as well as my midwifery job so I feel that it's changed my practice enormously so now whenever there's an asylum seeker or a refugee who comes on to either the postnatal ward where I was working or onto delivery suite now I always want to look after them <laughs> so I've really I've learned from their stories so some of the women have told me that they didn't have access to interpreters that um, there wasn't any informed consent they didn't really understand our birthing practices so the first thing I try and do is speak to them a tiny bit in their language if I can even if it's just to say hello. Um, I get an interpreter at all times. If I can't get a face-to-face -face interpreter, I'll get a telephone interpreter. Communication is key. Otherwise, how am I going to get to know this woman and give her the birth that she actually wants? Um, and it's just now I recognise the cultural norms of certain women. So I've worked with a lot of women from Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan, Albania. Um, and yeah, I speak to them about their food, <laughs> which always breaks the ice. It's a really good conversation starter. Um, and I know how to be really culturally aware, so by protecting their privacy and dignity, which I do for all women, but being particularly careful um, when it's women who have been through forms of torture, sexual abuse, FGM, things like this. It's knowing how to broach these subjects in a really culturally sensitive way. Um, so yeah, so I've learned quite a lot and I, I continue to feel really inspired and empowered by the women and their stories and hopefully in the future I'd like to be a specialised midwife with asylum seekers and refugees. <laughs> I want to change practice and I'm sure I will one day. It's just trying to get the message to the other midwives out there as well and the student midwives, which I know Maternity Stream do by going in and speaking to the universities and things. We need to understand these women's stories, where they're coming from and what they need to feel welcomed into the country and to feel loved. Mm -hmm.